now we will see the last problem on prism a hexagonal prism with edge of the base 30 mm and height 70 mm it should be axis height uh, has its edge of the base in the VP and the base surface is inclined at 30 degree and perpendicular to the HP draw its projection now here compared to the previous problem base edge is given in the VP so initially my assumption should be entire base is lying in the VP so that base can be seen which is a hexagon can be seen in front view in the previous problem when the base edge was lying in the HP we assume that the entire base initially kept on the HP so that in that case I can see the true shape in top view but here since the base is in the HP uh, sorry in the VP I will get the true shape of a base which is a hexagon in the front view so I need to draw that true shape above XY line so we will start with the hexagonal base now here we need to leave more space below the reference line just reverse of as uh, reverse as that of previous problems so after drawing the xy line I will first draw the hexagon now here we will follow the circle method in previous problem we followed that 120 degree angle method but here we will follow the circle method for drawing the hexagon hexagonal base here the base edge is 30 mm so for drawing the hexagon of base edge 30 mm I should draw the circle of radius 30 mm so first drawing the circle of base edge 30 mm Now, while drawing the hexagon, I should keep one base edge on the right hand side and perpendicular to xy. So, for cutting the arc, I should mark the vertical diameter first. Which will be perpendicular to xy line. Then after marking the arc, I will get the two edges perpendicular because if you mark the horizontal uh, diameter and then if you cut the arc you will get two edges parallel to x y line but we want one edge perpendicular to x y and on the right hand side because one of the base edge is in the VP so now I will take the same 30 degree uh, sorry 30 mm length and I will cut two arcs on both the sides so after cutting these arcs and joining the edges I will get the hexagon with two edges perpendicular to xy so hexagonal method that circle method is faster compared to the measuring one 120 degree angle but you have to keep, uh, remember when to take vertical diameter and when to take horizontal diameter if you want two edges perpendicular to xy then go for vertical diameter and if you want two edges parallel then go for horizontal diameter so make the base dark which is a hexagon Now again each corner will give me two points because two bases top and bottom will coincide ok so I start from here now here we are drawing the base in the front view so I will start the notations with dash so a dash uh, 1 dash a dash 2 dash b dash 3 dash c dash d dash sorry 4 dash d dash 5 dash e dash and 6 dash f dash now I need to draw the 
stop you which will be a rectangle with axis height 70 mm so I'll project the axis first again to mark the axis in front you I need to draw one more diameter for that circle but now here no need because obviously we are going to get the center of the circle as the axis so O dash O dash can be marked as axis now I will project all the corners first I will project the axis in the top view and then remaining corners remaining edges we should be parallel to each other now the axis length is given as 70 so starting with xy because base is lying in the vp so if i assume that bottom base as 1 2 3 4 it will start from xy line so the base which is lying on the vp will be seen as a dark line on the xy and then opposite base at a distance of 70 obviously the boundary will be dark and for top view observer will be looking from this direction for the observer this edge phi e will be visible and to b is invisible but since they are coinciding in top view I will give the preference to the visible edge and again axis will be coinciding with the same line which is a center line now dash short dash but preference again will be given to dark line now I will show the notations corresponding to this so our assumption is bottom base is 1 2 3 4 5 6 so corresponding I will get 1 for top you will get 1 as well as 6, 2 points will be coinciding here then here A and F then for this point I will get B and E and then 2 and 5 and here 3 and 4 and C and D ok now for next stage we need to redraw this top view but here the condition for redrawing is the base surface is inclined at 30 degree in the previous problem the condition was given for axis but here it is given for base surface which is lying on the VP so the base surface is 1 2 3 4 5 6 so that means this line I need to incline at 30 degree in next stage so keeping this edge 3 4 still in the VP because base edge one of the base edge should lie in the VP so I will keep this edge 3 4 in the VP and I will rotate this base at an angle 30 degree so I will keep 3 4 in the VP and I will measure the angle 30 degree to tilt the base at 30 degree angle Now we need to take distance equal to this base and we need to redraw this base here. Remember we are tilting the base edge, uh, sorry, the entire base and not the axis. So the opposite end will be here, 1,6. Obviously these vertical edges will be perpendicular to base. So, so to draw these two edges, we will draw a perpendicular from both the endpoints. After producing this perpendiculars, we will mark the vertical edges So, taking distance equal to this rectangular face 
cut an arc similar distance for 1 6 and EF. Now again we can mark this midpoint which will give me points 2 and 5. Now we can redraw this entire top view. Again, joining these two arcs will give me the top base. So we just rewrite the notations as it is. So 2 comma 5. Then opposite to 1 and 6, we have A F B E and then C D. And also O O will coincide here. If we can add O here. Now after projecting from top view and front view, we will get the final required view. This problem is different compared to the previous problem because base is kept in the BP first. Such problems are rarely asked in the exam, mostly with the HP are asked. After projecting all the corners from top view, I have to project from front view also. Then, using the rules of visibility, we need to complete the final view. Again, here these two corners will coincide. So, I need to drop a single projector. Again, here, I will get a single projector for both the corners. And then, finally, for phi and E. Now we will locate all those points. So 1 and 6 will be here. Then 2 and 5. So 2 will be here. And 5 will be here. Then 3 and 4. So 3 is here. And 4 is here. Then for top base A and F A is here then F B and E B is here E then C and D sorry E is not here ok now we will also locate the axis for that we need to drop projector from O, O, dash. And for, for top view, the projector for O is this line only. So, I will get O here. And again, O here. And all those notation, all these notations should be with dash because we are drawing the front view and not the top view. So, we should show with the dash. Okay. Now for visibility, observer will look from this direction. So if I draw these two lines, the part below these two lines are visible to the observer, but beyond these lines are not visible. So if you see this entire top base, which is A, B, C, D up to F is visible to the observer. So, I can make this uh, entire top base as dark. So, A to F, I can join by dark lines. So, A dash, B dash. And obviously, the first rule of visibility is the edges lying on the boundary are made dark. But the entire top base is visible. So, that's why we can draw all the lines A to F dark. 
Now next, we'll move to the bottom base, which is one to six, which is not visible to the observer. So I can make all the lines dotted, but out of the six ages, three ages, which are five, six, one, six, and one, two, with dash are this uh, lying on the boundary. So that can be shown as dark lines. But remaining lines, ages, which are two dash, three dash. Then three dash, four dash, and four dash, five dash. Three edges of the base, bottom base, are not visible. That's why they are hidden. Now, out of the vertical edges, two edges, that is two dash, b dash, is lying on the boundary, one of the vertical edges. So that will be dark. Again, the second edge, phi dash, e dash. Is again lying on uh, lying on the boundary, so we'll make it dark. Now, for remaining vertical edges, if you see the direction of observer, the vertical edge one to A and six to F, one A and six F are nearest to the observer, so those will be made dark. So one dash to A dash. How to show dark? And similarly, six dash to f dash. Again, dark. Now only two edges are remaining, which are three c and four b. So those are not visible to the observer, so I'll make them dotted. So for three c, I'm getting this edge, so that should be dotted. Again. If two edges are dotted from a particular corner, then third edge should be again dotted. So from four dash also, I'll get four dash d dash as dotted line. And last part is axis, which will be shown as long dash short dash as a center line. Okay. Now the last part remaining is showing the dimensions. So I'll show the base edge, which is given as 30 mm, in the top view. Then axis height is 70 mm. You can show it in top view. Sorry, the base edge is in front view, and the 70 mm axis length is in top view. And then inclination given for base. Now here, the notation will be five and not theta, because we are redrawing the top view. So this angle is denoted by five, and which is equal to thirty degree. Okay. So this completes the solution for this particular problem.